Just outside Bank Station, next to the really rather splendid St Mary Woolnoth Church, is a side road called Lombard Street. What's rather striking about it is that along its length there are a number of overhanging signs. Some of these are obvious relating to the businesses based there, others less so. Let's have a look at them and what they mean. First, however, a little context. Lombard Street dates back to the Roman era, making it one of the oldest streets in the city. The name, however, dates back to the medieval era, when King Edward I made a present of a parcel of land to traders from Lombardy in northern Italy. Edward had expelled the Jews from Britain in 1290, and this caused a bit of a problem. Business relies on money lending, but... Christians and Jews were prohibited from lending money with interest, or usury to use the more sinister-sounding technical term. However, there was a loophole. Christians and Jews could lend to those outside the faith. In Europe, Jewish moneylenders became very useful to businesses. However, nobody likes paying money back, so of course there was plenty of anti-Semitism. King Edward had realised that he could cut out the middleman by expelling his creditors and taking all their money, so that's what he did, which wound up being pretty stupid because now there were no moneylenders. The Lombards had a loophole. Lending money with interest was forbidden, but the Bible said nothing about pawnbrokers. So the Lombard bankers had two methods of charging their customers interest without technically charging them interest. The simple method was for the customer to sell the banker something, what we would now call collateral, only to buy it back later at a higher price. The more complicated method was to give the banker something as collateral, get the money, and be given a nominal date on which to repay. However, the banker would sternly warn, if the customer chose not to repay by that date, they would be charged a fine equal to a certain percentage of the money lent. It was understood by both parties that the customer would not meet that deadline, and he would have to pay the fine. Now, while this really, really looked like lending money with interest, it technically wasn't, and I guess the finer points of law were between the lender, the customer, and the big fella upstairs. So Edward invited the Lombards to London, where they could take the place of the recently expelled Jews. And that is why there is a Lombard Street, and why the financial district is here. That's also where we get a lot of our financial terminology. The Italian brokers would keep their money in a secure box, or casa, and sit on a banker, or bench. These days we get our cash from a bank. What does all that have to do with these signs? Well, these signs represent financial institutions that used to be based here. Before widespread literacy, symbols were an easy way to identify businesses. It was the birth of the corporate logo. The cat and the fiddle was the symbol of the Commercial Bank of Scotland. This, in my opinion, is a far superior banking logo to any currently in use. In heraldry, the cat represents gentleness, and the fiddle represents harmony and stability, although the sign actually predates the bank, so perhaps we shouldn't read too much into the symbolism. Let's just make sure we don't get hay diddle diddled in our financial dealings. This fellow is King Charles II. The king's head is a popular heraldic device, a way of declaring loyalty to the monarchy without specifically favouring any particular monarch. The king's head was the sign of the Canadian Bank of Commerce. The anchor represents hope, and it was the sign of Glynn Mills and Co., the anchor can, as you might imagine, also represent shipping. It could therefore be seen as a reference to the bank's role in financing international trade. The Hudson Bay Company, for instance, were customers. The grasshopper here was the sign of Martin's bank, but it's more significant than that. The grasshopper represents wisdom and nobility, and it was the symbol of the Gresham family. Thomas Gresham was a Tudor-era financier, merchant, and diplomat who lived on Lombard Street, and he and his grasshopper are all over the place in the city. 
He was a financial whiz kid whose advice saved the crown on a number of occasions. He was also responsible for founding the Royal Exchange, modelled on the one in Antwerp, and there's another grasshopper on top of that. The signs weren't necessarily attached to the businesses occupying the buildings, although some did take the symbols with them when they moved out. Lloyd's were represented by a black horse, and Barclays by a spread eagle. Following the Great Fire of London, overhanging signs were seen as a fire hazard and so fell out of favour. However, the signs were restored for the coronation of King Edward VII at the suggestion of Frederick Price, a banker and local historian. Twenty-three were put up, but alas, in the intervening years, all but four have been removed. Still, those signs remain as a curiosity and as artefacts of the area's long and important history. I hope you enjoyed this look at Lombard Street. If you did, then please do hit like and subscribe for more on London's history. And I'll see you very soon. Cheerio.